Hi, I'm Kimberly Washburn, Curator of Education at the Florence County Museum. Welcome to October's Family Day at Home. This month, we're talking all about fall. And in our first activity, we're going to be creating colorful corn art. So let's get started. You're gonna to need to gather a few things from your Family Day at Home kit. You're going to need your white paper, your craft paper, black oil pastel, your paint swab, your palette of three watercolor paints. You're also going to want to gather a few things from around the house. You're going to need a small cup of water. You might need a paper towel, a pair of scissors, and if you have a paintbrush, this might come in handy. You can always just use your paint swab, but a paintbrush might work a little bit more quickly for you. So if you have one, grab it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is draw our corn cob. So we're gonna start by drawing ovals in three columns on our paper. So I'm gonna turn my paper so that it's situated vertically so long ways up and down. And I'm gonna take my oil pastel and I'm not gonna start at the very bottom of my paper. I'm gonna come up three or four inches and I'm just going to draw with my oil pastel an oval. And I'm gonna draw another oval on top and another oval and another oval. These should look like rows of corn kernels now that I have my first row of corn kernels established, I'm going to come in and draw another column of ovals on the right and on the left. So I'm just gonna come back in, draw a few more corn kernels here. They can be touching or if there's a little bit of space between them, that's okay. They may not all be exactly the same shape, that's okay. Corn kernels are not all exactly the same shape. So that'll just give it a very natural appearance. So just get those ovals drawn just like that. Now we're gonna kind of bring our corn, kern or corn cob down to a point. We're gonna do that by doing two ovals in between the spaces of our columns. So one here and one here, and then we're gonna end up with one at the point. So that kind of brings it down to a nice shape. And then I'm also going to put just two at the top here. I'm not gonna do a third at the top. So now that we have our ovals, you may wanna take a few minutes and go over those with your black oil pastel so that those ovals are nice and dark. That's gonna help them show up as we start to add paint. Now, when we add watercolor paint to um, the ovals that we've created with oil pastel, you'll notice that the oil from the oil pastel repels the water in the watercolor. And so that watercolor paint will not stick to the oil pastel. All right, so those are a little bit darker and I'm ready to paint. So I'm gonna set my piece of paper aside for just a moment. I'm gonna prepare my watercolor paints. You're going to want to carefully open your paints so you're not spilling them. Now this is concentrated watercolor liquid. And so we're gonna add a little bit of water just to dilute it just a little bit so that we can paint with it. We'll have enough paint and the colors are still nice and saturated but that it's not quite so thick. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water from my cup into each of these watercolor paints. And I'm gonna use my paint swab to stir it a little. I'm gonna rinse it off in between each stir, between each color. That's what the rest of my water is going to be used for as my rinsing water. So now that our colors are very well stirred. We are ready to paint. So I'm going to come back over to my paper and I'm going to start adding color. Now just the way that we've added color with 
this example, you'll notice that we don't, we're trying to sort of spread out the colors so we don't have one large area of yellow or one large area of blue or red. And we're also going to be mixing some colors right on the paper. So I'm gonna start out by using my paint swab to paint this area yellow. So your paint swab works just fine. You can also paint some of the area in between the ovals, no problem with that. And let's say that we wanted this one next to the yellow to be orange. The colors that we've given you in your palette are primary colors. That means that we can mix these colors to create new colors. So I've got yellow here. I'm gonna add a little red to that, mix that right on my paper, and now we have an orange. You could also use a paintbrush, so if you have a paintbrush handy, you can certainly use a paintbrush. It'll hold a little bit more paint than your paint swab. And I like to go through and just choose all the ones that I want to be a particular color. So I'm gonna choose all the ones I want to be blue. Maybe paint some of those inside spaces as well. So we've got plenty of color. If you've ever seen flint corn or maize corn, you often find it dried in the grocery store and it's so colorful. It's a beautiful reminder of the fall season. I love when you can see that flint corn in the grocery stores. All right. So I'm gonna keep adding color until my work is completely covered. And don't forget that you can mix colors. So I might mix a little orange here, maybe a little orange there. Might try to mix a little bit of purple right there. If we mix together, together red and blue, we get purple or violet. We can find some spots to mix those colors. Now, your next step will be to allow your artwork to fully dry. Now that my painting is dry, I'm ready for the second step. So I'm going to use my scissors and just cut out along the outside border of my work. You don't have to cut right on the black lines. You could leave a little bit of white space around the outside, or if it's painted outside of the lines, it's fine to leave a little bit of space. Or you can cut right on the black lines, whatever you prefer. But I'm just gonna go through and cut slowly and carefully around the outside edge. so that we're only left with the shape of our corn cob and none of that background. Now, we're ready to add the corn husk sort of hanging off the top of our painting. So you're gonna wanna grab that sheet of craft paper that was in your kit, and we're gonna scrunch it up. This is gonna give our corn husk texture that will really bring our artwork to life. 
So we're gonna open that back up. And you may even want to scrunch it up a couple of more times. You may want to continue to sort of add texture by scrunching it and flattening it. Okay. So now I have a nice textured piece of craft paper here. And I'm ready to tear strips to create my corn husk. I'm going to start by just making some small slits with my scissors along the bottom edge of my craft paper. And I did that along the short edge. I'm going to be tearing long strips. But those little cuts that I made help me make sure that I'm not getting a lot of little tiny pieces or really big giant pieces, but they're, they're sort of close to the same size. I'm just going to grab that first strip, hold my hand down on that um, craft paper, and tear. I'm going to do it again. You can kind of pull to the side if you want pieces that come to a point. You can pull straight if you want your pieces to be straight. I kind of like a variety, so I sort of pull both ways. And I'll show you, if you don't really like that edge, I'll show you how you can work on that. You can flip it over if you have a really wide piece and a flat piece, just make another, um, another slit. And if you have a square edge and you think that that doesn't look very natural, you can always just kind of tear it to a rounded edge or a point, just something that looks a little bit more like a corn husk that is sort of natural and not just something that is cut with scissors. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of lay out my pieces so that I know what I have. And then I am ready to start attaching them to the back of my corn husk or to my corn cob. So I'm going to have these pieces of husk kind of coming out of the top. We're going to glue them onto the back and I like to start by just taking three or four pieces to start with, kind of fanning them out just like this. And then I'm going to put some glue on each of these and on the back of my artwork so that this creates a nice first layer. So again, I'm using my glue and my glue swab. I'm just gonna kind of make a line of glue. It doesn't take a lot. This isn't heavy and it sticks easily. So I'm just gonna kind of fan these out to create a nice first layer. Okay, just make sure I have enough glue to stick it down. All right, and so this is what it looks like. I could leave it like this, but I do have some more paper strips and I might wanna add those just to create some additional texture or another layer of texture. I can just kind of put these in between or off to the side of what I've already got. I'm gonna use my glue and my paint swab and just get these glued down and any spot that I feel like could use a little bit more, another layer of corn husk. So something like that. This is the back of my work that I'm working on. So if the, like this one is a little bit short, but that's not gonna matter. You're not gonna be able to see that because it's the back of the work. I'm gonna see where I want this one to maybe go here. Okay, and then maybe this one here. All right. And now I have created a beautiful, colorful corn cob art. I hope that you find a wonderful place to display this this fall season and enjoy making fall art with us.